are. Yep. Fleet Street Hill. I'm here with your man Jay from the One Love Community Network. <laughs> He's going to be building a beautiful garden here. I'm here to bring the artist to create the backdrop for the art. But the work, as far as the garden is concerned, is all down to people like this man here. And Jimmy. <laughs> and Jimmy. No, that's why I said people. And the community. Yeah. Jim, and what's the other fillers? The community. You better name them now. <laughs> a lot of rocks by hand um, we had a lot of guys come in to yeah. help with the paint and whatnot to prepare for the artist so now we're just getting ready for people to come in and more artists to come in later on and tomorrow so we're just building up for the day so it's early now but feeling good this is all charred it just yeah. see it's all sort of elongated yeah. it's, that means do you know what that means you can't eat that when something um, does this, it's bolting, what we call bolting, it's going to flower, and then normally after that it kind of dies back. We're right on the edge of East London, so we've got Liverpool Street right here, Commercial Street there, so we've got the Crisis main office here, and this is the Crisis Community Garden. So on the other side, this is where East London starts and the city finishes. Are you right, Patrick? Hi, Patrick. <laughs> cool, bruv. Well, this is... Uh, lemon balm and we need to get that out of there. So mint's doing quite well. I mean it was all just roots before and it's come back up. Really? Um, oh my goodness. I'm going to harvest some of these. They're, they're, they're gigantic aren't they? Mm. We're going to have them for our tea. This place is amazing. <laughs> it's the Atlee Centre, so it's a, um, a centre for children, mainly children with learning disabilities and whatnot. Um, there's a really good team here, Tanya and the guys do amazing work in the local area. The lead tutor on the project, Anne-Marie, um, leads a class every Monday. And um, so guys from Crisis, got anyone signed up to Crisis, anyone that's been homeless at any stage, at any point that's ever had to sign up to Crisis, has an opportunity to do gardening just next door to where the centre is where a lot of people go for day activities and whatnot. So it's a great place to get out to. Obviously, you know, I love gardening and I love being outdoors, growing food and these things, but it does provide great benefits for people for therapy and things like this, for social, um, to be more social. And what Amory does, which is quite different and interesting from a lot of the other community garden projects, or also your community garden or this type of garden project, is that she uh, gets the produce from the garden and cooks it, or well, largely produce mainly from the garden and cooks it and has an alfresco dinner, weather permitting, for all the guys, which is also really nice. And the guys get to not only grow the food, not only prepare the soil, plant the seeds, grow the food, propagate plants, see the plants growing, to harvest but they also get to eat the plants as well which I think is really important so my nan's up a hundred and she's out in the farm every single day like always farming always gardening like a lot of it by herself and like she says that if she ever stops that's gonna be it for us so she's never gonna stop as far as she's concerned Good soaking, especially the tomatoes. Where's the tomatoes? There, but if you there, see there, in the middle bed, just there. Yeah. Those two, three rows there, there's tomatoes. Okay, I'll give it. Uh, I think I'll pick some of this. We're going to take this one out. Um, oh, it's, it's in the wrong place. It's a, it's a really beautiful plant and it grows very easily, uh, dynamically. And uh, in Kew Gardens when I went there, they had this big herbal sort of section and they're now thinking it might help people with um, Alzheimer's, I think. Oh, really? so it's a very subtle, gentle kind of plant, but it makes a nice cup of tea as well. So I'm going to just mix it in with some mint, which is kind of stimulating and uplifting tea.
yeah, so I suppose, I mean, for me the garden is about um, giving people an opportunity to make their connection with nature and the land and food and plants in general. I used to volunteer for a, a brilliant group called Commu Growing Communities and when they started out they're mainly based in Hackney and they're actually a really successful community growing enterprise um, and they've got a very good ethos <laughs> and they basically started off growing food in brownfield sites but they kept on being developed so more and more of that's going to happen if any brownfield sites are going to be under extreme pressure for development. They ended up using sites that were... Don't water us Patrick! They ended up being in sites that were uh, inside parks and things like that that were more protected because after having developed sites and then having them completely destroyed you know, um, it's a bit disheartening because gardens do take some time to establish, I think. And, and I know Jay's doing this uh, at Temporal Garden, which is another kind of idea as well. Hi, I'm Junior. And I'm Jimmy. It's a shame that big spaces like this are empty and derelict and nothing's happening with them. For the first phase is we're going to be doing a clear up. So we're going to clear up the site. Next step, paint the walls. Next step, get the beds in. Then offer those um, beds to local residents to come in and use them. Anything you want. You want food, herbs, flowers, whatever you want to grow, more than welcome. It's your bed. Do what you like. When the time period's up, we plan to move the garden to another location nearby. We're in the Manic Community Gardens, which means that we can relocate to any derelict space that has access to direct sunlight. An art space, we've got lots of walls that we can um, invite local street artists. Anybody that lives close by will be, fly, uh, will be flying around to the post, um, flying around to the neighbours, speaking to people anyway, anybody that wants to come down, wants to have a space to grow that lives locally, more than welcome, up to the limit of the beds that we have available. to be able to use places like this to provide spaces that communities can re-establish themselves, local support networks can grow again, and the cult cultural borders and boundaries can sort of be surpassed with everybody interacting again and sharing a space for a communal habit. And so this place in particular, it's been derelict for like over 20 years, and um, Neighbours, residents, they're scared to come past this. So what we want to do is make it usable, interactive again, safe and beautiful, so people can not only get that sense of ownership together, but also get that sense of ownership of a space, but also share that together in order to create those aspects of social cohesion that are necessary in the city environments. There's about 120 feet worth of fencing, new fencing that needs to come up. There's a bird's mouth gate at the end to allow pedestrians to enter and exit safely because there's a bicycle lane and we don't want them walking straight out into it. A couple of years back, what was it, four years ago, um, me and my partner, who I'm doing this one love project with Jimmy, um, we were on our way up to a farm called Walnut Farm in Norfolk to meet a friend of ours called Lee, who runs us permaculture, setting up a permaculture project out there, sort of like a 
sort of hippie retreat, yoga sessions, meditations, sweat lodge, this type of a thing. So we were going there in the early stages to kind of, well Jimmy was going up there in the early stages to help set it up, so I was going up there for the first time. So we ended up in, um, we were getting the train from King's Cross, but because the train left, um, the train we were about to get cost like 40 something pound, and then the train an hour and a half later cost like 20 pounds. So we opted for the 20 pound train and thought, well, we'll walk down to the Welcome Gallery down the road, chill out there, and then come back for the train after. So we did that. On the way back, um, Jimmy wanted to have a little chill out around the back of a church, like with um, opposite Euston Station, um, with the big sisters outside. And he specifically wanted to go there, just really like the monuments or whatever. And so we went there. Around the back of it, um, as we often do, we ended up in conversation with people. And one of the people that we spoke to was a gardener called Audrey, um, who we spoke to and she seemed to be struggling quite a bit. We asked her like, what sort of help she was getting and she worked by herself. And she did say that there was a job on that she had to do that she needed people to come down for. So um, we offered to help her out to get the people, save her having to run around and look for people, give her more time. She was a bit stressed out doing all the gardening work she's doing. So just did that swap details or whatever and then I got her a few fellas to come down to come and help her out got them a bit of work got her work without any hassle so it was pretty much a win-win and then funnily enough one of the fellas let us down on the last day so I stepped in so not to let down Audrey and ended up having a relationship from there with um, um, yeah with Audrey and she took me on full time and sort of took me on as, a, as an apprentice and I used to go to work with her my first gardening job was at Quaker's meeting house which was really nice and the church next door where I happened to meet her as well. So that was my regular job. And then we also did lots of private work around the North London area, surrounding area. So I, re I really learned a lot about gardening firsthand working with her. So I have to give her a lot of credit for the opening up of my gardening career. So that was my initial introduction. There's a very strong, especially in London, um, there's a really strong, been a really strong for quite a few years, upswell of activities like this in, in community gardens. And I think because of people like growing communities who've got an economically successful model going on, which is flourishing and um, uh, has worked financially as well as, as a ground up, you know, ground up organisation that's surviving and being ethical and flourishing, then they won't be wiped out. You know, it's probably people who rely a little bit more on funding like uh, like we do in crisis you know, that this is I suppose a little bit more of a therapeutic side of you know the sort of well-being side of connecting to the land and growing um, that might suffer um, so I'm not sure quite what will happen because there's been a movement actually there's there's an idea that it's cheaper to use growing therapies than it is to use traditional okay sort of um, mental health services. So there's, there was a shift in the last few years over towards thinking that perhaps this kind of project's worth investing in. We'll have our scaffold boards by tomorrow and then we'll be looking to make as many raised beds as we can get in during this week. Um, and again, that's kind of like half building them as examples, waiting for the community to see how much they want to engage or if they want to come in and, and build them with us. So we'll see how that goes, but could end up at the end of this week with about 20 or so raised beds so it's just a question of whether we start the growing now or wait a little while longer but I think we're gonna we'll have to see how it goes really we'll have to see how it goes and everything is dependent on funding so we will see but hopefully we'll start growing within the next two weeks so looking forward to that Judy and I met on a on the first of January uh, I don't think it was a messy night the night before, which is meant to be because of the 31st, but it was, it was pretty messy that first night and we heard about each other for a long time through some mutual friends and they kept on, whenever each other would start talking the way we would, we would start to talk, they always used to say, oh, you should meet you know, Jimmy or you should meet Junior. We got to really engage in um, some of the ideas that we had in a way that we shared and, and in a way that was progressive which is something that's quite different because in a lot of instances we were almost telling people about things that they didn't either understand, believe, care about 
Um, so it was almost like informing people, but where we had the shared understanding, it was very interesting to put these ideas together and then think about ways in which we could actually use our minds to make a difference. And that was the first conversation we've ever had, and now we're partners in this. Where do you start? Um, I think f for us, we're both on the same path, do you know what I mean? The same kind of you know, journey. Like We've both been given certain experiences and things that have allowed us to think and see things in certain ways. And, and we are um, therefore able, I guess, to kind of you know, work together, do you know what I mean? And, 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 and we've managed to kind of co-visualise this thing that now exists. What, just over a year and a half, we had set up our first organisation, which was really cementing some of the ideas, how to get these ideas across in an effective way, in a model that could be useful and also could have growth leading to actual solutions rather than just a continued conversation. Yeah, and I just think that um, the important thing of, of, of how to re-establish communities um, is by giving them a space that they share, that they co-own, that they're responsible for. And I, I think that community needs to be empowered, you know, community that feels disempowered, you know, can, you know, can take, you know, can split apart. And, and it's and it's not so much the you know communities; it's community. You know the the, the, the total thing. You know the, the space where we can all uh, interact um, and 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 learn and share and grow. I love Jimmy Lodz, my brother. And just whoever wants to come down, or or if they can, and we'll see how it goes. in itself with no music no association with any other illegal activity other than painting a wall without permission I felt that it suddenly became mainstream and it was allowing different types of people whether you was 
artistically challenged or not, for me, it allowed different types of people to go out on the street and produce art and put something on the street. And I felt yeah, yeah. that was important. It was something that everybody could get involved in and it was something that everybody can do. And again, it didn't matter if you was any good or not. What matters is the message. You know, so that's what really attracted me to, to the scene. And, I, and I've always been attracted by creativity and no rules. And part of that the creativity arena for me, it, it is no rules. together with the guys Jay and Jimmy from the One Love Community group because they had they had such great ideas. They approached me originally with the, uh, the idea of providing some art but to be honest I get approached by two three people a week to get involved in different types of projects but this project it had such weight to it and I felt that it had legs and I felt that what the guys want to, want to do with this area is, is incredible and it's well needed and so that's why I really jumped in at the opportunity to get involved because it is a positive project. It's good to have a juxtaposition of all the different kinds of art because you've obviously got the major street artists mm -hmm. and then you've got like the other guys on that end. So it's like, and you come in the middle and you've got like uh, some fine, like more fine art. It's just completely came together organically. Yeah, and massively. I love that. massively. I love, that's art in itself. Exactly, like the fact that we could come in and say, look, we want to paint, and you was like, yeah, go on. Like a lot of people wouldn't do that, they would give you that platform because they want to know if you're good and they want to know what you can bring, but how's anyone meant to get good if no one gives you a chance, you know what I mean? And that's what the whole project is about, so I love it. so great you are, it's nice when people you say are. that but i'm not man i'm not <laughs> i'm just a normal man. Your it's, lo it's, it's great it's Absolutely lovely <laughs> it's lovely yeah, I, you know what the thing is i don't meet people i'm at home with the family <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i have my life is family and obviously spraying and i don't where i spray i don't meet people of course so i never know really what people think of the work but i like it it's and, lovely man it's gorgeous. and that's what keeps me going yeah you know? man
So on the other side, this is where East London starts and the city finishes. So it's really a beautiful area. And just over here, um, where um, some of the interesting projects I like as well are the ones that are around um, homeless hostels and things like this. So um, there's one just opposite here in um, on Wentworth Street, just off Commercial Street there. It's called Providence Row. There's a, there's a place called the Dello Centre. They've got a really beautiful roof garden that they're creating. There's a forecourt that's really beautiful where they do um, gardening with some of the residents and people that come in for their day centre. But on the roof, they've also got a, a solar panel and are now developing in the process of developing. Been working alongside them a bit to work to create a, a roof garden, an active roof garden. There's going to be loads of veg growing up there, mushrooms, fruit trees, kiwi trees. There's going to be beehives. As I said, there's a huge solar panel. So they're covering a lot of bases um, on that roof garden. It's a really special project. But then there's also other ones. There's Hope Town Hostel just down the road where WEN, the Women's Environmental Network, have, um, as part of the Gardens for Life program, have set up different community gardens. And that's a garden in a hostel where the residents can then grow their food. Previously before that, um, at the Salvation Army Hostel, again, just down the road, this is all within less than a mile radius, um, there's a hostel there that um, initially there was not much there. Um, and then alongside um, Stepney City Farm and um, a gardener, a resident in the hostel called Gary particularly, and um, they developed a beautiful roof garden, um, a be really beautiful roof garden. The residents can grow, eat food, um, I've used it myself, it's very, 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 very lovely. They've recently got extra funding for that to develop that as a project. So that's something that people are always going to be able to go through as they come in and out of some of these difficult situations, which is really beautiful. And again, I mean, just five minutes walk from that is where our site is and we're located just next to another Providence Row hostel and again quite close to, to um, crisis so I mean linking in with people that are going through difficult times and them having a space an outdoor space a beautiful space to go to that's really some of the main beauty that lies behind community gardens but then also you've got gardens in estates like Cranbrook Estate that's one of the best ones that I know um, getting the residents involved right where they live in and around community centres Bromley by Bow Centre has another really beautiful one Organically is a great project, a little bit further out, but that's a really great project for people to learn. They do lots of great courses. We've got the city farms around here, Spitalfields, who are doing a lot to help us on the project as well. We're right next door. And um, Hackney City Farm, which is just a little bit further. So we've got many projects and more just in the surrounding area. And so we're really adding to what people are already doing. I mean, as I mentioned when before, they've in the last year or so they set up 15 community garden spaces, 15 brand new spaces for people to go to and working alongside them and setting up these spaces and knowing why it is that they do the work that they do and how they do it and seeing the real benefit it has to the community. This has really added to the drive of really creating this space and doing it in the right way. There's loads of people doing really great work in and around East London and everywhere else but those are just a few.